Welcome back to Golf Today. We continue our conversation on race and sports in America, moving golf forward. One of the more visible stars who has been focused on helping golf in its efforts to diversify is the Warriors All-Star guard, Steph Curry. The avid golfer announced in 2019 that he would financially support Howard University's golf teams for the next six years. The historically black university hadn't fielded a team since the 1970s. It's a family thing for me as well. My dad got me into the game when I was 10 years old, and uh, a high percentage of my rounds have been with him as well. Uh, bridging that part of you know my relationship with the game into creating this opportunity with Howard to provide scholarships for men and women to play the game, to go to Howard, to invest in their, their education, um, and be a part of this amazing amazing university that I've, I've heard so many great things about. And with that, we welcome in Sam Purrier, director of golf at Howard University. Sam, you have made it your mission to elevate golf at historically black colleges and universities. What has the journey been like at Howard? It's been interesting. It's like having a large box of Legos and right now I'm putting pieces together. I mean, everything from scheduling to training to identifying if you can start at A to Z to complete a program, uh, it's been it's been an interesting room, but it's been pretty exciting because you can see a lot of young people that uh, have a huge appreciation for what I'm doing and have a huge appreciation for what we're trying to do as a program. Sam, when you look at things like funding, community support, what are some of the biggest differences between historically black colleges and universities in, say, a Stanford or a Michigan State where you also coached? Yeah, I would. I think number one, I think you hit it on the head. I think support financially is huge. I also think just a respectability. You know, when you're at Michigan State and Stanford, and you call up a local golf course and say, "Hey, we're from Stanford. We'd love to come out and play," they say, "Hey, let's see when we can get you out." <laughs> you had a smaller school. You call up and say, "Hey, we would love to come out and play." Uh, there's a lot of him and horn. There's a lot of let's take it to the board. There's a lot of that type of things. I've been pretty fortunate in a couple of respects. Uh, a couple of the best clubs here in town have said, "Hey, we would love to have you. Uh, give us a call." And I'm, you know, I'm quick to not abuse those, you know, relationships. So I don't call often, but I do know that th we do have a few places to get out and play. So that makes it all worthwhile. But that financing piece is probably one of the larger differences. Sam, how did you get hooked up with Steph Curry, and what was that first interaction like? Well, I, I mean, it's interesting. I, I didn't deal with Steph and talk to Steph, Stephan during this entire process. So it had been years since I had actually spoken with him. We actually played golf together years ago. Uh, he's from Charlotte. I was living in Charlotte. We have a, a mutual friend. And my buddy one day called me up literally on a Saturday. I said, hey, coach, what are you doing? I said, I'm about to watch the basketball game. He said, I'll tell you what. I'm going to get a golf game going. Can you be here in 25 minutes? I said, well, I don't have anything else to do. I show up. And when I get there, Stefan is on the tee with my buddy. And they're like, all right, let's play. So that's that's how I met him. And so it was a good interaction. Uh, and we, you know, we, we initially hit it off just doing that, just from a perspective of, you know, Draymond Green is on that team. Draymond was at Michigan State when I was there. So we called Draymond on the course, good conversation. But honestly, after we played golf, I hadn't had another conversation with him until after I had accepted the Howard job. So he had no idea that I even had an interest in the position. Well, Sam, what's been the biggest benefit of having Steph Curry providing these six years of funding for Howard's teams? Well, I think the, the biggest benefit is that I'm in a position now where I can literally craft this like we had at Stanford. And, and that means from course access to equipment to scheduling to opportunities to uh, even something as simple as internships and co-op opportunities for the students. Because we used to always say, and I really believe that this is not a four-year decision, it's a 40-year program, it's a 40-year decision. And having Stefan behind me gives it validity and respectability to say, hey, we are putting together a first-class program and the students are gonna get what they need to be successful. And at the same time, it's still programmatic like any other program. I'm still having to go out and raise money and do those type things to sustain what we're trying to do. But that just that respectability, uh, having the respect of an NBA champion, a, a future Hall of Famer, a winner, 
I consider myself a winner. I've been blessed enough to win six rings. So to me, it's just a unique and wonderful partnership. You know, Steph has been one of the folks to speak out after this emotional year following the death of George Floyd. What kinds of things did you impress upon your players during these volatile times? I think we all have a responsibility, and, and the students know it. And, and what I share with them is it's so much larger than the name on their license. You know, at the end of the day, uh, you represent so much more, so many more people. And at the, if we do what we're supposed to do, uh, when no one is watching, I think we can all be better people. You know, Sam, you've been out front in golf's diversity efforts for decades now. This is not a new story for you. What are some things that have worked that golf should do more of? I think at some point, golf has to understand that there's no cookie-cutter approach. You have to have people that are willing and programs that are willing to knock on doors in community and realize that no is just a part of the verbiage. They're going to tell you no, and you have to be willing to continue to ask and ask in different ways. We have to be willing to bring a unique and a diverse group of people to the course just to get acclimated. But we also in those communities have to understand that the plight of what we're trying to create is not just trying to create outstanding PGA Tour golfers. There's so many other things that you can do within the golf industry, golf architects, golf lawyers, golf business people. I mean, imagine some of these young people who are incredibly astute uh, as it relates to economics and different things like that in, in, at the university level. They can get into the golf business and work on becoming a golf GM, doing some of the different things. And I think if we were able to bring that to these communities and, 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 and relate that with the, with the golf community, I promise you the golf world would be a lot better off for it. Well, Sam, it's an important journey and an impressive journey that you've been on. Thank you so much for your time today. Well, thank you guys for having me. I think what you're doing is, is impressive. I think what you're doing is important, and uh, it will live a long time because I think golf is the most wonderful sport in the world, and all of us make it better.